You know, he is a holy God. And the Bible talks about lifting holy hands as we worship. And it's just such a sacred time for the body of Christ to where we just don't care what anyone else says. We don't care what anyone else thinks. There is one that it matters to us what he thinks. Amen. Amen. It's God. Really, truly, his opinion is the only one that truly matters. And it's the only correct one. There's a lot of voices in the world today. But we have the advantage and the privilege to be able to hear the voice of our God. Amen. Amen. Before you're seated, tell somebody good morning. Good morning, everyone. Y'all having a good uh, good week? Summer's almost over. Parents, ready for your kids to get back to school? That's a collective yes. I was a parent once, I remember. It's like school's starting. It's great having you with us, though. If you're a guest and uh, here at Naples Church today, my name's Paul Fossil, and I pastor Naples Church. Uh, the gal there at the end uh, talking is my wife, Maria, and it's just a privilege that you came to be with us today. Those of you that are watching online, just want to say thank you so much for being uh, watching online. But if you're in town here and you're looking for church to call home, please come and visit us in person. Please, if you are here as a guest today, would you grab this welcome card? It's in the chair back in front of you. Fill it out. When you leave, go through these middle doors. We have a welcome center on the right-hand side. And, you know, we just uh, want to do everything we can to help you decide where you want to go to church. So if you have questions... Please drop this card off. We have a gift for you. Just want to say thank you for being here. Um, but one other thing I'm just going to ask you is this. I'm going to challenge you to come at least three times before you make a decision. You know, because you just can't come to one service and get to know everything about us. Um, especially today because maybe you love food trucks and we have food trucks today. <laughs> and you're going to come back next week and they're not going to be here. That might cause you not to come back. I don't know. No, but, um, but anyways, you know, uh, so please... Uh, come back again. It's great to have you with us today. And also remember, you know, we can't do what we do without your faithful support and your giving. And I know there's many different ways that we can give nowadays through texts and online giving and through the bank and just so many different ways to support the church. So, you know, we have, um, you know, we're believing God just for increase this year. We have some things that we need to stay ahead of our growth and get some things done. And, and I've been talking about that. So, you know, uh, please, anything that you guys can do, uh, if you're already doing it, awesome, awesome, awesome. But if you're not, I want to encourage you, get a part of what's happening here. Incredible things are going on uh, with our kids, our, our youth, and just here in the sanctuary. And your giving is very important. This week, this month, we're going to have two different missionaries that we support. You're going to see updates from them in, in, in the, over the next couple Sundays. Um, your giving what you give, we give too, you know, so we just don't tell you to give and we don't do it ourselves. We also are givers. So please, you know, you'll be able to, you know, if they're here, they might have a table out there, go out there and grab some stuff. But one thing you can do today that's important is uh, two things. One, our blood drive is coming up. And what's important about that is this, is it's, I, I just got a, an email because I've given blood. I just got an email in the last two weeks that said they're sh running short on blood. And as I said, you know, my, I just, I kind of have a personal goal of 100 people giving three pints each. Remember that, three pints each. And so, you know, I, I really want to see that. And then today, you know, we have all these food trucks out there. Um, I want to make sure we support our community and what they do. And so... You know, it represents us as a church. Uh, so I want to encourage you. You might not have kids, but before you go home, go out there. They got donuts, pancakes. They have food. They got lots of different things. And uh, just enjoy it and be a part. Watch the kids do what they do. And if you want to go down the slide, you got to wait. All right? It's for the kids. Let's pray. Father, we thank you just for this day. We thank you for your goodness and grace in our lives. Everything we have is from you. And, Lord, you own everything. And as we give back unto you, Lord, we're giving you what's yours. And so I just ask, Father, that as we support your kingdom, you support our kingdom, 
But we give today in faith, knowing that as we sow into your kingdom, we believe 100% that that's going to come back in our future, and you're going to take care of us in Jesus' name. Amen? Good morning and welcome to Naples Church. My name is Paul and I'm so excited you're here with us today. If it's your first time, take a look at the back of the seat in front of you and grab a welcome card. Take a moment to fill it out and bring it to our welcome center at the end of our service today. We'd love to say hi. Join us for an empowering parenting conference on September 1st and 2nd. This two day event is designed to equip and inspire you as a godly and engaged parent. With faith and psychology converging, our guest speaker, Will Hutcherson, will share insights from his book, Seen, offering hope and practical guidance. Don't miss this opportunity to invest in yourself and your family. Registration for the Parenting Conference will open next Sunday, August the 6th, so make sure you mark your calendars for this amazing weekend. Sunday morning, August the 20th, we're hosting a blood drive. Donating blood is one of the most practical ways that we can make an impact on our community. Each blood donation can save up to three lives and all of the donations will stay here in our community. Our goal is to see 100 donations on August 20th. So if you want to take part and help us meet that goal, you can sign up to donate blood in our lobby today or online at NaplesChurch.com. Join us for an unforgettable evening at our ladies night out on August the 4th at 6.30 p.m. The theme is night at the beach and it's going to be an incredible time together. Ladies' Night Out is the perfect opportunity for women of all ages to come together for an evening filled with fellowship, connection, and pure fun. Whether you're a longtime member or new to our church, this event promises to create lasting memories and forge new friendships. The cost to pre-register for this event is $5 per lady, and you can secure your spot by signing up today in the lobby or conveniently online at NaplesChurch.com. Thank you so much for joining us for church today. For more information on all of our upcoming events, you can always visit our website at NaplesChurch.com. Have a great day. So we have a, in, a, in pretty busy August. Um, get involved. We have our ladies meeting, the ladies fellowship that we always have, the ladies night out. We have our men's you know, the next morning we have guys, our men's group that is here, bring a dish and, uh, you know, make sure your wife's cook unless you're a real good cook, all right? Just do that for us. Uh, but no, and, and we've really just upped our game for our, our men's time and you don't want to miss it. It's, it's fun, it's great, great teaching, great food. And it's real important we get together as guys. Uh, we have church leadership, which is another real important class that my wife teaches just understanding church leadership and, and how things function and flow. Uh, again, blood drive and growth track, big, important growth track this, sun, this month as we continue to believe for increase for our, our youth and our kids and, and here. One area we really need help in is parking. You know, today it could get interesting, but we just, we, you know, we only have a couple guys in the parking team now. Uh, after COVID and different things, and I know it's Florida, so it's hot, and it's a hard, it's a hard group to get people to join. Um, but today could get real interesting with kids and parents staying after and playing and traffic. And so um, every, you know, I think sometimes we forget because we think, what's the big deal of parking? You know, I don't want to get hot, and what's the big deal? It's a huge deal when somebody comes for the first time and they don't have anywhere to park. Or it's a mess out there and they can't get in and they can't get out and they're like, why do I want, you know? Um, we just live in a day and age. It's, it's a big deal because what's happening is, is we're hindering someone from receiving the gospel. And, and you know, and we, we just are and we gotta do everything we can that that doesn't happen. That's why if you're a guest today, I, I just, I really believe in what our youth and kids are doing so I, I support it. And I wear it from the pulpit and online and out in public and it's just important that we do that. And so I just want you to, you know, everything you do, your giving, your time, talent, treasure, and touch, it's all so vital for God's kingdom to grow. It just, I can't tell you how vital it is for us to continue to grow. And so a lot's going on. And then parents, this is our first parenting conference. And I just so want to encourage you to sign up and be a part of that. 
And um, it's going to be a good, really good couple of days putting, as I said, the psychology and faith. And we're talking about faith. And so um, it's important that you're a part of that. Mark 11, 23 and 24, as we look at today, as we look at, um, guys, I'm just starting with this, so they don't have this. I'm just was thinking about, I, I referenced this scripture last week, and I thought, oh, I'm just going to read it because I kind of quoted it, and so I just want to read it. But as we look at living empowered, we're going to spend some time looking at faith. We're finishing today on David. We're finishing on, you know, the structure and everything you see in the story I'm telling you, you will see elements of it as we get individualized, as we get real specific moving forward these, after this weekend and looking at faith and, and what faith is and how to grow our faith in all these different areas. But Mark eleven twenty three 23 says this, for assuredly I say to you, whatever, I'm sorry, whoever says to this mountain, a mountain is an obstacle. A mountain is, that's all it is. It's symbolic of an obstacle that it's bigger than you. It's trying to stop you. And sometimes how many know uh, mountains, you know, if it's a big enough mountain, you can't cross it. But how many know all things are possible to them that believe? And with God, he knows how to make mountains crumble. And so whoever says to this mountain, be removed, be cast into the sea, and does not doubt in his heart, but believes those things he says will be done, he will have whatever he says. Five times the word say is referenced here. Your words have power. This doesn't say just, you know, how many know you can speak to your mountain in faith, and it's going to change, or you can keep speaking the same thing your mountain's speaking, and it's going to stay. It says if you don't doubt what you're saying, and a lot of people put a lot of faith in their mountains. And this is something we got to change in a good way. There's ditches to everything. I do my best to stay in the middle and to teach you you know, from a biblical standpoint, really true what confession is. Then verse 24 says, therefore I say to you, whatever things you ask when you pray, believe you receive them and you will have them. Isn't it interesting, praying is mentioned once, but talking is mentioned five times. So there's a lot of emphasis on the things we say. That's why your marriage will never get better, your relationships will never get better if all you do is talk negative to each other. If we only talk what we see we don't like. Right? You can pray all day long you want your marriage to change, but until your words line up with your prayers, your relationship isn't going to change. And so we have to learn, we've got to get better at, the, you know, remember, Christianity is called the great confession. You can't get to heaven unless you confess. I mean, you're not going to heaven by just saying, well, I believe, in, I believe there's a God. That doesn't get you to heaven. Right? A lot of people believe Satan's a God. The demonic church. Well, you know what? You're not going to get to heaven. The Bible says what you believe in your heart, if you say with your mouth and you speak it, you're saved. It's the believing in your heart and the confessing of your mouth that brings eternal life and salvation. And there's only one God. And his name is Jesus. Amen? His name is Jesus. And then verse 25 says, and whenever you stand praying, if you have anything against anyone, forgive him. You have to be a person who forgives for your prayers to work. Amen? So turn to your neighbor and say, I forgive you. See, a lot of you didn't do that. We'll have to talk on that later. Okay? So if we're looking at living empowered, Acts 13, verse 22, tells us this. But God removed Saul 
And when we, if we would study Saul, Saul refused to change. That's why he lost his position. Saul blamed everybody else but himself. And replaced him with David. Why? Because when David sinned, he repented quickly. His heart was right with God. And a man about whom God said, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. He will do everything what I want him to. He's going to do what I want him to do. And when we obey his commands, when we wake up every day and say, God, not my will today, let your will be done in my life. God, what do you want to do with me? God, I'm just available for you today. And if I'm in a place and you need me to do something, I just believe I'm going to be, I'll, I'll respond. Whatever that is. And you just, you, you, you commit your way unto him. God ordained my plan today. Don't bless my plan if it's not your plan. And there's such a difference between Saul. Saul just refused to do what God said. He constantly disobeyed. And David didn't, but David had a heart after God. And that's why, you know, as the, the next thing, and I, I brought this up, but if you weren't here last week, who's the second most talked about person in the Bible? King David is. Next to Jesus, King David was talked about more than anyone. So we should, act, we should be a little more aware of the way he lived his life and what he did and how David believed in his life. And so when we look at faith structure, here's something that's very, very important to begin with, what we see about David, and that is this. David had great humility and faithfulness. Humility and faithfulness get, take you a long way with God. See, when you look at humility and faithfulness, what do we see here? But David said to Saul, your, what's that next word? Servant. How did David see himself? As a servant. And he always saw himself as a servant to the day he died. Because the Bible says he served the will of God when he was alive to the king, to, to Israel. Your servant used to keep his father's sheep. David was committed to do his father's will. And when a lion and a bear came and took a lamb out of the flock, I went after it and struck it and delivered the lamb from its mouth. And when it rose up against me, I, bought, I got it by its beard and struck and killed it. Your, what's the next word? Your servant. Everyone say humility. If you want to always be served and everything is your way and selfishness, faith doesn't work. Not well. Not well. When you're little kids and, and even big kids, I mean, don't have to be little anymore. They come to you and say, I want, I want, I want, I want. Does that move your heart? Doesn't move mine. When kids are selfish and they just want, 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 and give me, give me, give me, and, and you know, we shouldn't give them everything. And they're not grateful for what they have and what they've gotten. You know, we do our kids an injustice if we're not good parents. Come on, you can guy a little, you know, just maybe a little better amen and on that one from me, you know? Don't give your kids everything they want. Teach them disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> amen. <laughs> Teach them disappointment, all right? Okay. Raise them up, Miami fans. 
teach him disappointment. <laughs> and if you're a visitor to Miami's fan, just think I said somebody else, all right? And then it goes on to say, your servant has killed both the lion and the bear, and this uncircumcised Philistine will be like uh, one of them, seeing he's defiled the armies of the living God. David was humble, and David was faithful. What? He did a job that was opening mail, a job no one saw him do any, he's never seen. But he, he was faithful to do and to protect, and he never let those sheep, he never left them. He protected them. He was faithful, and he was a servant. And what we need to realize in life is this, is that God prepares you early on in life for what he's called you to. Everything that I've done in my life prepared me for this church. When I first started in, 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 in ministry, and that was just serving when I got saved and came back from Bible school, I answered phones, worked in children's, worked in youth, did prayer ministry, did street evangelism. I mean, we did, we did everything and anything we could do. Whatever God wanted us. We're actually, you know how we started? Wherever there was a need, we just did it. It wasn't like, hey, I will only do this. Now, we don't want to put you somewhere that you hate. I mean, if you hate kids, we don't want you there. I mean, if you sold yours, we don't want you there. Okay? That's a joke. Bad one. Nowadays, that's a bad joke. Sorry. <laughs> How many know we live in a different world now? It's sad, but we do. But he was faithful to do what he was supposed to do. And when we're faithful in the little, God gives us much. And God many times uses and prepares you what you do early on. Well, it seems really bright, like uh, hot to me or something. Uh, when he prepares us for what's coming, okay? Now, the second thing was this. What works for others might not work for you. So what do we see in 1 Samuel 17, 37? Moreover, David said, the Lord delivered me from the paw of the lion and from the bear will deliver me also from the Philistine. And Saul said to David, go and the Lord be with you. There should be, uh, all right, sorry, I got to change, wrong verses. What worked for others might not work for you. So Saul clothed David with his armor, put on a bronze helmet on his head. He also clothed him with the coat of mail. David fastened his sword to his armor and tried to walk, for he had not tested them. And David said to Saul, I cannot walk with these for I have not tested them. So David took them off, and he took, off, he, he took his staff in his hand. He chose for himself five smooth stones from the brook and put them in the, uh, in the shepherd's bag in a pouch which he had, his sling in his hand, and he drew near to the Philistine. Now Saul had the best armor, but how many know David never used armor? So just because it works for somebody else, it doesn't mean it's going to work for you. God will lead you in your life for certain things. You know, I've seen, I've been in this over 30 years and all these things come around. I remember many, many years ago when it came to, and, and, it, it, and I forget what it was, but all of a sudden it was this diet. And because somebody did a diet and they got cured, it helped them, their body, God led them to do a diet. They made it a doctrine, and they started this whole thing on this diet, but it worked for them. It might not work for you. 
So what is God asking? That's why you got to search, seek God and say, God, okay, what do you want me to do? Do you want me to go natural? Do you want me to go to the doctor? Do you want it a combination? And he might lead you to do certain things. But don't just do it because someone else did it. You know, somebody gave a lot of money, and all of a sudden you think, well, I got to give a lot of money because a miracle happened to them. Well, God led them to do that. He might not be leading you to do that today. I'm, I'll give anything, but I'm also search my heart. And so it's important that what works for others, it might not work for you. But how many know God's word works for all of us? God's word works for all of us. That's why you always, always never put anything above the Bible. Don't put a diet, don't put an exercise, don't put anything when you're facing something. It's got to be God's word. Now, your diet and exercise is important. Next month, we're going to have two classes in the back. Space is limited, but you're going to want to go. Because the gentleman that's teaching it, I, I love the way he teaches. He's a chiropractor. He's one of my advisors, and he does a great job. I trust him. He keeps a great balance between spiritual and natural. Now, he might tell you you can't eat McDonald's, but I don't listen to him on that one. <laughs> oh, there he is. <laughs> <laughs> I better move on. <laughs> not only that, but not only... <laughs> you got to be prepared for the unexpected when you're fighting a battle. No one... How, how many know things are going to come up? Why did David take five stones when there was only one guy? In case he misses? Don't think so. He was, a, he was like an expert marksman. And if he took out a lion and he took out a bear, I, Goliath was nothing to him. So why did he take five smooth stones? Well, Goliath had four sons. And if dad goes down, maybe the sons are going to retaliate. And David knew, he's like, I better be ready for something else. Faith is ready for the unexpected. Don't let it shake you with unexpected things come up. David killed Goliath with a what? A rock. Who's our rock? Now, you know, the Bible says Jesus is our rock. He's the cornerstone, the chief 1 Corinthians 10.4 says, And all drank of the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that followed them. That rock was Christ. That's why when we fight battles and we're believing in faith, we throw Jesus not good thoughts. Amen? Amen? The word of God we better have in our lives. We fight with God's word. That's Jesus. David fought. It, he used rocks. To me, that's a type of Jesus. In other words, he put his trust in that. What are we putting our trust in? Okay? How is God leading you? <laughs> I said, I, I guess I forgot. I had a couple of illustrations I wanted to use there, and I forgot I put them down about dieting. You know, like, well, I ate carrots for a year. Only carrots. No, you turn orange if you do that. Literally knew a guy. He ate carrots so much, he started to turn orange. His skin did, just a little tone. It was funny. Just saying. Faith moves forward. 1 Samuel 17, verse 45 and 46. 
Then David said to the Philistine, you come with me with a sword and a spear and with a javelin, but I come to you in the name of the Lord of hosts. When we're believing God in a storm, in a mountain facing us, Goliath, something, an obstacle, what do we come to that in whose name? Come on, that's not a trick question. Whose name do we fight in? Jesus. We come in the name of the Lord. Of hosts, the God of the armies of Israel, whom you defied. This day the Lord will deliver you into my hands. Everyone say humility. Humility. David didn't go out there and say, look at me. He said, the Lord will deliver. The Lord is going to use me to deliver Israel. But he didn't say, I'm, it's because of how strong I am and how big I am or how good I am with a slingshot. He was humble. He put all his trust and faith in God. And I will strike you and take your head from you. And this day I will give you the carcasses that, um, Uh, of the camp of the Philistines to the birds of the air and the wild beasts of the earth that all the earth may know that there is the God in Israel. See, David said, the Lord will deliver you into my hands. He knew where his help came from. He knew where his strength came from. You know, I, I put this down. David did what he did so the world would know God existed. Just just stop for, indulge me for a second. David did what he did so the world would know God existed. If that happened today in the church and Goliath showed up and if this would happen today, you know what it would be like today? It would be, hey guys, make sure one of you has your GoPro. Make sure you get the slow motion shot at this angle. All right, let, you know, make sure I got my GoPro GoPro on my helmet as I go out because, I mean, we got to see the action here, right? And then what we would do is we would post it on YouTube. Because we need to be an influencer. And if I get enough people following me, I'm going to make money. And everyone's going to see what I did. And then I can brag about what I did to everybody in the world. And look at I got the right angles and the right camera shots and I got the right pose and get it right. Guys, when you see me bringing it back, Wait, Goliath, hold on. He missed the shot. Okay, let's try it again. Am I right or wrong? And then David took the sword. You know what we do? We would sell it on eBay. Man, I got this sword. Who wants to bid on the sword that took down Goliath? And we would sell it on eBay. And then we would write a book. And then we'd get on Oprah. And it's all about what I did. See, God doesn't work that way. God's not going to give his glory to anybody else. And I think sometimes, maybe in our world today, why we don't see more is because if God did do stuff, we we would post things that just were about us. And we wouldn't brag on him. We would brag on my diet or my new this or my new that. And honestly, guys, anything that works, God's got to be the one in charge of it. Amen? God has to be. Can you imagine today? Can I, you want to give me my phone? David just took out Goliath, and this would be today. Let me get a selfie. 
Wait, wait, I can't get his head in there. I got to get his head in there. Wouldn't we? You know, the Bible says that when you go to the Lord, go to your closet. If you give, don't let anybody else see it. And what he's just saying is this. He's saying, when you give, I'm your source. You're going to be rewarded based on what you do. If you go out and you brag about it, then you've gotten your reward. But my reward will come in secret. Faith and humility are important. Amen. And here's the other thing as I close with this. First Samuel, verse 50. I'm doing pretty good on time. So David prevailed over the Philistines with a sling and a stone and struck the Philistine and killed him. But there was no sword in David's hand. Most people in the world today, listen to this quote and I'm done. Most people want to be free of their giants so they can get back to living their lives. God is only a distant part of wanting to be better. Most people want to get rid of their giants so they can go back to playing tennis. They can go back to their way of life. And this is why I think sometimes faith doesn't work is because we don't want to get rid of our giant for God's glory and to do his will. We just want to get rid of the giant so our life is easier. And I can get back to my own life. And I just want us to think about, because if we're going to really believe God and start growing in faith, then, see, all these little points, it might be for someone over here, but not over here. How is God leading us? But if we only want the blessings and to be better and all that, so we can just go live our normal life without him, how much faith do you think is going to work there? Let's be honest. Why was David great? Because, guys, you know what faith is? It's about the heart. Everything David did was for God. It's for his glory. But he did it doing his life, and you can do the same thing doing your life. Faith works in every application. But God just says he wants you to put him what? Number? What place is God supposed to be in your life? Your spouse, number one, or God? Yeah, my wife is down here. <laughs> God's up here? No. She's right there. But God, and, and she'll tell you, she's glad God's first in my life. And I'm glad God's first in her life. Amen. We're better because of that. So let's do the heart checkup so we can move forward and believe him. Bow your head and close your eyes. You know, as we close, the Bible says that Christianity is the great confession. And I just want to make sure that everyone in here knows heaven is your eternal home. Just to believe that there is a God isn't enough. You have to believe in the one and only God. And you have to believe in his son, Jesus. And the Bible says those who call on the name of the Lord will be saved. For if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth, you'll receive eternal life. Now, in a few seconds, if you'll pray with me, I'm going to ask you to raise your hand and look at me. You raising your hand is that symbolism of your calling onto the Lord to live for him, ask for forgiveness, become his child. And so if you're here and you don't know 100% heaven is your eternal home, if you don't know your sins are forgiven, 
And if you did pass away, do you know that you go to heaven? And if you can't say yes, you need to pray with me. So if you're here today, no one looking around, but if that's you, say, Pastor, I need to pray. I need to get my life right. If that's you, would you lift your hand and look at me? And I'm going to look across the congregation because I just want to make sure everyone in this room knows heaven is your eternal home. All right, then I'm going to pray for you. I don't see any hands here this morning. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you that faith works by love. And Lord, faith works with a heart of a servant and humility. As we leave here today, Lord, if there's areas of our lives where we're trusting in ourselves too much, show us. Lord, if there's things that are getting in the way of, of, of receiving from you, show us. If there isn't, but there's things we need to start doing or changing about our lives, show us. Because, Lord, we know that as we believe you and do the supernatural, we do the spirit side and we do the natural, great things happen. So today we're saying, Lord, you're our deliverer. We're going to put our trust in you first and everything else second. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. We love you guys. Have an incredible day. We'll see you next Sunday.